bars with 15 minutes and 15 minutes. But it can be less than 15 minutes because if it's less than 15 minutes, like your mind doesn't have time to really disconnect a bit. Like you need to be a, a pro like that and then be the, in the nirvana. No, it's not the case. Like, That'd be great. You That'd know? be great, but we will start with 15 minutes if it's fine. Exactly. I think it's going to work. And as I was saying in the website, like when when I was, you know, explaining about the challenge to some friends, they were saying to me, Well, you see, like sometimes you can do <coughs> meditation when you are running or doing exercise. I just disconnect my mind when I'm doing that. And I agree, okay? But, and I don't want to do the bad, like, uh, excluding that opinion. Um, I believe that for the purpose of self-observation and training of the mind, it, it's easier at least for me to just sit, put some music or not, and just close your eyes and open your mind and see what happens. The point is that meditation itself is a very hard state to reach and it's very easy to confuse it with other things like mindfulness. You can do mindful walk, you can do mindful walking, you can do mindful cooking, mindful dancing, mindful singing, many, many, many other versions of it. But the meditation itself is a muscle that is specifically trained by the brain if you do it constantly only with consistency, like doing push-ups. If it's not done that way, it's impossible to define it with other exercises that the brain can do. Meditation is specific action, but it's not concentration, and it's not contemplation, and it's not mindfulness. Meditation is the state of the brain that you can reach or achieve only through practice, and to start and have a glimpse of what it actually does to you. The best way is to just do that, not mixing it with other things. Otherwise you won't be able to really put a line in between where one starts and where it ends. The second part of the challenge, okay, that this part of the challenge can seem a bit confusing, but we are going to try to explain it with words now. <laughs> okay, the next part is what they call conscious observation of the world. Such a long way to describe go to have a walk and have your eyes open and know in the phone for talking to your friend about some random boy or some random girl or some random food or whatever random that is not outside. A conscious walk. So 30 minutes of conscious walk every day. You start putting your feet one after the other, see where you're going, look where you're putting your feet, look around you, look what's happening, see the spots on the pavement or whatever comes around. You're going to the forest, notice it, you're going close to a bakery, smell it. Every single little thing that comes along your 30 minutes, try to be mindful and conscious and notice it and acknowledge it. Yeah. I agree to that. I agree. No. I well, add to add to that. Yes. I have to add yes. that. Um, yeah, what you say is a very good description of what you have to do in the post walking, like just observing the world and having all the details. <coughs> and if you meet with people, <coughs> you just need to, you know, to keep your eyes, your ears open. I'm not telling you to be stalker, you know, but like. What we are, what we wanting with this conscious observation is realizing all the synchronicities that are happen all the time around us. And if you don't pay attention to them and you don't have eyes for them, you are never gonna see them. That's why the conscious walking is very important. And I'm saying conscious walking, but actually it doesn't have to be conscious walking. Okay, it's the best option is to conscious walking because when you move. When you are walking, your brain starts to move as well. But if you stay, stay like sitting, and you just look in the window, uh, your brain is easily is gonna easily to get distracted. But uh, I'm saying that because there are some people that they may want to take the challenge and they don't, they cannot walk or they cannot go out of the room or 
or maybe or some maybe major impediments like a storm outside, outside and really. you cannot go out even though walking under the rain is beautiful but sometimes maybe if it's raining it's pushing down and there is light or it's a blizzard or snow maybe you cannot go outside okay if that happens then you do the same conscious observation you can do it in the window if you can see it outside the window because there is no matter of snow or something like that but the main point is that you need to be observing your environment and in our opinion the best way to do that is having a 30 minutes conscious walk every day the next part of the challenge is called reflect on your reflection what this fancy name means it means that every day every day well every year like from when you wake up until you want to sleep every day you need to write with impressions. What does that mean? You asking me? Yeah. All right. So you wake up. You have your 30 minutes conscious walk. You have your 30 minutes meditation, and many, many things are gonna happen to you every single day when you get to the end of the day. Try to revisit what happened to you. Look at your day like it was a movie or like you're reading a book. Draw your own conclusions. See yourself through a, an objective point of view, not a subjective one. And then reinterpret it again. Many things that you lived in first place will appear different. That's my think. And if they don't, then maybe you were very good and mindful and very well grounded that day, which is even better, but you will be conscious of it. <coughs> that would be an idea. General idea of what a reflection could be. Reflect on the <coughs> image that you gave out to the world and also what the world looked like because you were how you were. <coughs> Sorry. No, it's fine. Many people say that whatever we see in the world is a reflection of our own soul, the way we see it, the way we project it outside. So when you get to the end of the day, try to see how you projected the world out of you. Try, try to see if you could have done it differently or if it's okay the way you did it or if you missed something. Anything can come up. My idea of what a reflection or reflection is <coughs> So basically a diary. Yeah, it's a diary, a journal of every day. But the point here, like sometimes people don't think what they can write about. I don't know what, like many people don't want to just think about the effect. It's not exactly that. It's not about like, okay, so I'll make some wishes. I wish I had done this, I wish I had done that. No, that's not what we have in mind. Because we are doing 30 minutes meditation and 30 minutes conscious observation for walking. I feel, or at least that's how I'm gonna take it for making it a bit scientific to as well in the in the reflection in the reflections, uh, yeah, the writing. You basically I'm gonna myself, I'm gonna focus on how the meditation went and how the conscious walking went and then I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna add some reflections about that day. Reflection, reflections. That's what? the whole point of the game of words. And as yeah and as we're well. trying to kill ourselves here. But <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> anyway. But not so hard. It's not so hard. It's just funny. And it has to be funny and it has to be interesting and that's what we hope that this can give to people a way of looking at themselves in a different way, of growing, of keeping a journal of their own achievements day by day. And by that, like, as we are taking the, the challenge for ourselves, yes, of course. we are going to publish every single day we've been working today, that, honestly. That's what we are going to yeah, like it has been an absolute challenge to to make a website. <laughs> okay, but well, we are gonna do every day a post, a post that tells 
how it went. But yeah, the reflection of the day. Basically, instead of writing it in our private journal, we are gonna put it out there for you to have a look. Exactly. And if you are you are invited as well that if you are doing the challenge, you can go to or pages like day one, day two, and in your day two, you write your impressions there. So at the end, in every post of every day of the challenge, which are 90 days, we have a record of the impressions. And the most interesting thing about this is that how amazing it's gonna be be able to compare day one with day 90. How our minds are gonna change just by doing 30 minutes meditation, 30 minutes conscious walking observation, and writing. What we are defining today, we are defining psyche. It is important to define psyche because, well, the website is called Psyche Nautic. So we kind of need to clarify what we are. Why did you call it like that? It just came. Honestly, it was an inspiration. I was one day, and I have to say, maybe I was a bit high, but that doesn't matter. I just, you know, opened the heart. And just the name came by, came through my, my head, and it was okay, it needs to be called Psychonautics, Psychonautics, because as well, it makes sense. Like, Psyche is, is a Greek word for soul. And as well, I've been reading as well what soul means. And soul is like, like a, I don't know how to say it to her. Like a, de aire, like a blow of air, like, that feeling. For, for as long as I can. Anyway, from that to psyche nautics, why the nautics? Because we are basically gonna create the art of going to your conscious. That's what we are here for. We are creating a fucking die now. Your psyche is like in the center. Exactly. <laughs> um, for me, psyche, well, the nautics is like aeronautics, okay? Like nautics is just... Or aeronautics, like the, the Greek heroes. It's about, again, a bit of adventure spirits to go into this definition and try to discover them and discover what they are for you. Psyche for me means soul. What I understand as soul, uh, soul for me is the conjunction of conscious mind, unconscious mind, which includes unconscious, um, collective unconscious. I have a bit of a trouble to differentiate subconscious and unconscious, but I guess we can put it in the <laughs> And then, um, Conscious, unconscious mind, feelings, and feelings, no, feelings, and um, the gut feeling as well, the intuition, all this field of, of energy, for me, it's psyche. That's a psyche. A psyche is related to an entity, a person, and it's everything that that entity has to feel has to think and to process. That for me is like unless I don't know if I I did the you know like No, it's 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 clear but I think it can be confused a bit with ego. Uh -huh. Which of course you didn't put in the bucket because it's a separate thing. That they probably gonna be fine as well one day. Yes. Yeah. Um so yes. Uh, psyche as soul. Personally, I see as that special link. I putting together all the things that I've read and all the things that I experienced myself. The soul would be the link in between what's 
the universal spirit or your higher spirit as well with your ego and your present life as a human being. It's some kind of uh, subtle energy in between where the vibrations are not dense enough to be magnetic but not fast enough to be spiritual. And the special watery, flowing, airy limbo where everything mixed together and really connects and becomes meaningful. But Asagi has individuality, individuality, right? It's different for every single person because it's going to be. If it's a connection between something that is a higher spirit and what is happening right now, every time that this change, this is always going to change, this is going to be changing a little bit. So it's going to always be slightly different. Not as transformed as what happens below, but not as static, static as immutable. That's what it's about. Okay, yeah. So that would be my idea. That's why. For me, like, Psyche has, has a connotation of really receiving. It's there to receive Psyche. It's there to receive input. Inputs from the mind, inputs from the feeling, inputs from the intuition. It's everything that is kind of sensorial. That's oh yeah, but that, that's happening also to your physical body, it's not only, only happening to your soul. What the soul does, what the psyche does, is that it stores them together and it processes them. Okay. Putting them in contact with what is coming from above as well, not mm -hmm. only from below. It's like a connector there. And the, the generator that mix, mixes the match, that makes life Magic. Which is another definition of magic. Right? That's right. Okay. That's so, our connection to the magic. If you want to put it in short words, I think. I would say the connection to the air, to the universe. Which is also. magic itself, but. Okay, well. let's say the connection with the universe that is also the channel through which we can create magic. Yeah. Because that's where we yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, let's say that this is my specific for our mission of like a in the room. For now. I mean it changes. No. Yeah. Like the main point of that is kind of debating a bit. Like obviously it's I can be so, but I feel that so is a bit. Nowadays have very controversial work. Because not many people it's even so uh if you misunderstood and it's very easy to get confused about it. Yeah, and it's very easy as well to just, you know, don't give it any value because you say you don't believe in anything. We'll see what we believe in. For the moment, this was the first video for the first show, and we'll see what happens next. We're gonna go on with the challenge. Today is yeah. our first day of challenge as well. We are just done.